That was your most impressive and challenging question for me. The current state, meaning the just before the DH moment state, is only about 30 years old. The idea of the monograph um, and the sort of uh, university press giving it a sort of legitimacy, that's recent. That's, that doesn't, that's not an eternal history of what the state of publishing. So I guess in a certain sense, um, I think we're seeing a speed up of what's usually an ongoing transformation process anyway. I guess I'm sort of on the kind of radical fringe of people who are making the argument that everybody should learn some programming. And as a scholar, you're never kind of finished. Um, and if you're going to be a scholar of digital technology, you're always going to be studying something as you try to improve your skills. I, I, you know, I can't tell you how often I have more conservative colleagues, like their whole argument against the kind of born digital scholarship that I'm doing is essentially, I hate to read off a screen. I, I just, I don't even know what to say to people like that, other than, have you like looked around at what people are doing? Have you have you paid attention to what people are actually doing in the library? When you're there, you know, Xerox copying the pages of that book, have you looked at what everyone else in the library is doing? Um, and the ways that they're on their smartphones um, or, you know, multitasking and drawing on these different kinds of media and computer resources? How do we preserve it? I, um, I, I don't think we can. <laughs> I'll tell you frankly. Part of the professional training that has to go forward is to train academics to do uh, the work of self curation, so that you curate your own um, projects and you maintain them. Um, and if you do that, you'll preserve them for as long as you pay attention to them. Um, and I don't know if we can really imagine that um, the digital lifespan uh, can be measured against uh, the storage property of paper. Right now, I do still think that uh, we're tied to the, uh, the publishing industry and uh, that we need to rework those things and uh, fine-tune them and publish them in the forms of books and articles in order to preserve you know, those arrows that... Uh, are your finest as a result of that kind of work? That's as much a technical question as it is a sort of philosophical question, which is already embedded in how you're asking it. Is it necessary? Do we need to collect it? Does it need to be archived? Um, I think it does. Um, I think the work definitely needs to be archived. If for no other reason than it's interesting to go back uh, and fish and pull things up that were interesting. I mean, I think of like, uh, mashup and remix culture. Where would we be if we did not have this sort of archive of strange media artifacts, and 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 probably even more so than our sort of collections of libraries in in, in book form. I thought that was a great question too, um, and that made me think about the possible return of something like a turbocharged dilettantism a word that doesn't have a lot of positive valences surrounding it, and something that I've been accused of being myself. So I, I want to embrace the idea of being a dilettante, right? I think a born digital scholar will be someone who's fascinated with digital tools themselves. And if we're talking about the humanities, it might be someone who just loves literature writ large and is fascinated with the kinds of things digital tools are capable of doing with text, but isn't so concerned whether that text is Shakespeare or Milton or Philip K. Dick. Writing itself is a technology, um, a properly understood. It's a technology for thinking new thoughts. And um, so in, in looking at the problem from one perspective, I'd say the digitization um, doesn't change that equation at all. Um, uh, the internet is uh, properly understood, is, you can be used as a vehicle for thinking new thoughts. Uh, um, so um, in that respect, a born digital scholar versus a born tech scholar, uh, they both face the same challenge, which is how do you come up with an idea worth sharing?
It literally was not until I heard the term digital humanities that things began to fit together for me. And that's, it was, it was, I, I, in some ways, the, actually the term itself, um, Matthew Kirschenbaum talks about digital humanities as a tactical term. And there is this way in which, it, for me, it was tactical in that it, it helped me immediately um, see possibilities that I hadn't really seen before.